студентка групи КН Н-718. Сьогодні я хочу представити магістрську роботу на тему «Онтологічний підхід до класифікації результатів навчання з комп'ютерних наук». Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Елизавета Чистополова. Today I want to make a presentation of my master thesis topic an ontological approach for learning outcome classification in computer science. Can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, great. So, today I want to talk about the project named Gecko, which will explain my research question. Then I will explain results of my work and compare them to the precision of expert. Then will be discussion about problems and ways to solve these problems and a conclusion. The thesis is addressing the problem which is important in the field of applied computer science and computing education. It includes also work with learning outcomes from curriculums, analyzing and understanding them. That's why there exists a project named Gecko, which works with curriculums also. It represents curriculums as a directed graphs. Why it exists? because it's almost impossible to analyze hundreds of competencies from dozens of curricula manually and to find the relations between these curricula. Why? Its goal is to help teachers to save their time, which they spend annually for, creating a for working with curricula and analyzing learning outcomes, for creating a learning plans for their students. How? By presenting curricula, which are most, uh, in most cases stored in as te plain, plain text or in best case as table, as a directed graph, where learning outcomes are presented by nodes and relations are presented by uh, edges between these nodes. However, to, ma to make it possible, firstly we need to, determ to determine these relations between learning outcomes. That's why the research question of my master thesis is to which extent is it possible to identify relations among the learning outcomes from computer science curricula using keywords and action verbs. I want to use keywords for relations determination and action verbs for direction determination and then to compare my results to the precision of experts. How it works? The first step, step is data preprocessing. I need to clean and standardize learning outcomes. Then I can try to determine relations of two types, of two types expands or requires. And finally, determine directions between learning outcomes. Let's take a deeper look on each of these steps. Firstly, cleaning. We remove all the irrelevant information from the learning outcome such as text in brackets, stop words, and phrase the students are able to or equivalent as every learning outcome starts with this phrase. The next step is standardization. At this step, we, uh, we replace diverse synonyms with one main synonym. For our example, it is, replaced, it is replacing a phrase of the set of step-by-step -step instruction with algorithm. Finally, we can start determination of relations. As I was telling earlier, there are two types of relations, expands and requires. Let's take a look on example. The students are able to use standard output devices to successfully operate computer-related technologies. Expands, the students are able to use standard input devices to successfully operate computer-related technologies. As you can see, these competencies are very close, almost similar. These are an example of the type expands. Other type requires. The students are able to use technology resources to solve age appropriate, appropriate problems. Requires. The students are able to use standard output devices to successfully operate computer-related technologies. This 
two learning outcomes are connected even though the connection is less visible. This is the type of requires. For determination of relations of the type expands, I use Jacquard coefficient. For the learning outcomes, which we get on the step of data preprocessing, I check firstly nouns. If I see a match of nouns between two learning outcomes, it makes sense also to check the whole, the whole competency. I choose nouns as they represent learning objects, the most important part of competency. So, after the check of the whole learning outcome, I can uh, get a probability, a number which shows how close these two learning outcomes are. The closer to one, the higher is the chance that these learning outcomes are connected. Depending on different probability boundaries, you can see that how the results are different. Green color represents those pairs of learning outcomes which match validation corpus. Orange color represents noise. As you can see on the left chart, the higher is the probability boundary, the lower is the level of noise. But right chart shows us also that the higher is the probability boundary, the lower is the percentage of, of uh, related learning outcomes from validation corpus, we can determine automatically. For future work, it was decided to choose the probability boundary of 0.4, as it showed the most balanced results. With this approach, I can determine automatically 62.5% of uh, relations from validation corpus. However, there are still not determined ones. The reason can be absence of common fixes between, between two learning outcomes which were thought to be connected, or as in our case, the students are able to identify positive social behaviors for using technology, expands the students are able to get the information with parents, which was just a human mistake. These learning outcomes are not really connected. For determination of requires relation, I need to find a uh, I use pairs of keywords, which are representative for those pairs of learning outcomes, which, are so, uh, which were defined uh, by experts to be related by the type of requires. So, again, I work with learning outcomes, which I get as an uh, output of the data here. I check keywords. In our case, it's algorithm requires computer operation. That's why I can see that these two learning outcomes are connected. If I use all the pairs of uh, keywords which were extracted, extracted automatically, I get a very high level of noise. You can see it on the left chart. However, if I uh, remove all the pairs of words which are irrelevant for computer science field, I can decrease the level of noise by 90% which was a pretty good result. With this approach, I can determine automatically almost 56% of the relations from validation code. However, there are still problems. The reason for not determined relations were absence of directly connected keywords in two learning outcomes. Or, for example, those keywords which gives more noise than positive results. In other words, it's the required problem and such connection which will give more negative results than positive results. That's why it shouldn't we shouldn't pay attention to it. As it was told earlier, Gecker is uh, represents curricula as a directed uh, graph. For requires relations, everything is good. On the, our, in our approach, we use keywords which shows which keyword requires which keyword and shows which learning outcome requires which learning outcome. So we know the direction. However, for expanse, require, for expanse relations, we know only the probability of how connected two different learning out, uh, how high is the probability that two learning outcomes are connected. But we don't know the direction. That's why we need to define it. For determination of directions, I use action verbs. They are stored in a table where uh, action, uh, main action verb is stored in the middle. On the left side, the action verbs of a lower level are stored, and on the right side, action, level, action verbs of higher level are stored. To determine uh, the relation, 
in our example, I use for the words manipulate and action verbs manipulate and gather. Due to action verb, uh, triples of action verbs, gather is of a lower lab, uh, level than manipulate. That's why this uh, pair gets my, a coefficient minus one, which means that first learning outcome require, uh, expands learning, second learning outcome. In next, ex uh, in next example, action verbs are understand and use. And understand is of a lower level than use. That's why the coefficient of this pair is plus one, what mean, that means that second learning outcome expands first learning outcome. With this approach, we can automatically determine 88.5% of relations. The reason for not determining relation, relations are pair, pairs of learning outcomes where action verbs are not representative. For example, both learning outcomes have same action verb. About comparing results to the precision of experts. If we take a deeper look, a deeper look on expanse relations, we can see that about 40% of uh, about 40% of determined automatical relations match validation corpus. However, after post-evaluation, it was also uh, found that 92% of uh, uh, all determined relations were positive. In case of required relations, the numbers are uh, lower. 10% of relation automatically determined relations match validation corpus and 50%, 52% uh, of uh, all relations were defined positively. For direction determination, 88.5% uh, of directions were determined positively. If we talk about problems and ways to solve these problems, for expanse relations, it's most likely absence of common lexis and to one of the way to solve this problem, I think it's developing of dictionaries of synonyms for computer science, because it will give a chance as a chance to reduce uh, the level of usage of different synonyms in uh, learning outcomes. These problems appears because we work with a curricula from different countries, and uh, representatives of these countries might use different synonyms for uh, same. Or almost same concepts. In case of requires relations, it's uh, absence of direct connections between concepts. I think that the option uh, to solve it is to create a complete ontology, which will give us a chance to use connections, not only direct connections between options, but also directions through levels. Cre uh, creation of uh, complete ontology can also so help us to solve the problem with direction, the problem with uh, not representative action verbs. Because if two learning outcomes have same action verb, we cannot define the direction using these verbs. However, we can use a step uh, which uh, reminds us uh, an approach for determination requires relations. We can use learning objects, so nouns, to determine which learning object requires which other learning object, and it will show us the direction. And also, one of the problems was expert mistake. We all human, we all make mistakes, and I think that the option to decrease the number of this mistake is to increase the number of experts or to increase the group of experts who are working on evaluation. As a conclusion, I can say that Dracard coefficient shows good results for determination of expanse, uh, expanse relation, even though uh, it gives us a chance to, to determine not all the relations which was determined by human experts. It shows also uh, some relations which were missed by this human action uh, by this human expert which is definitely positive results as for determination of requires relation uh, ontological approach de definitely gives positive results however it for sure should be uh, improved and reworked into full complete ontology 
about direction determination, action verbs works, uh, work really good. And uh, if we continue work and develop uh, a full complete uh, ontology of keywords, we can also improve the determination of directions uh, in those cases where action verbs are not representative. Overall, the approach uh, shows really good results, uh, even though there are still some problems. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Mikhail Dmitrich. Is there tell me please about uh, more about the applied results of your work? Excuse me, can you repeat please the question? About the, tell me please, uh, more about the applied results. Uh, my results, uh, my goal was to find uh, relations between learning outcomes and to create uh, and uh, to store these relations in such a way that they will be usable in future in the project Gecko. So that uh, for adding new curricula or for an analyzing already existing curricula, we don't need to, uh, from the very beginning, to invite experts. The evaluation should uh, can be done automatically and then uh, analyzed by experts and evaluated by experts whether these connections are good or bad and uh, experts also can add their own connection which should, could be missed uh, by automatic approach. How many experts uh, you used? Uh, for creation uh, of validation corpus as I know for now there were three experts. Three. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any question. Alexander Tanch. Uh, just a moment. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Lisa, uh, please tell me how many languages uh, you can uh, use now in your system for uh, build uh, outcome results, syllabus. It's only English, or you can use uh, different language. Now, uh, for now, we were working with uh, English language. Those curricula which were originally in German were still translated in English, and all the evaluation was applied on English translation of those curricula. Okay, thank you. Uh, but uh, in future, you plan uh, use uh, different ling uh, other languages, uh, for example, Ukraine, Russian. It's not exactly my part of work now, but oh. I suppose that uh, it is possible. English is the most universal language, so English should be for sure there. And uh, English is uh, most suitable for applying natural language processing and for calculating everything. So we can use also, for example, curriculas in Ukrainian and Russian translated into English for calculation and evaluation. But if the person or human, uh, if teacher wants to use this uh, project with Ukrainian or Russian competencies, uh, he will read the competency in Russian or Ukrainian, while evaluation will be still in English. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, thank you for your question. So I have a question, Lisa, about uh, Jakarta coefficient. Could you please explain why do you choose uh, actually uh, Jakarta coefficient and uh, is it possible to compare the result with other coefficient? Uh, Do you have such experiments with uh, another coefficients of similarity measures? At the very beginning, we were trying a few different uh, similarities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm 
we have some problems with connection. Yeah, I think uh, Lisa should greet Eileen. So I think yeah. she, we, we lost the connection to her. Yeah. Okay. Какие-то проблемы у нее, да? Он что-то... Такое впечатление, что с интернетом застал. Let's see. I will try to read her. Hi, Lisa. We lost the connection to you. Try to log in, please, okay? So it's our first experience uh, <laughs> to make the defense <laughs> in online. <laughs> well, no, it's not. The, uh, well, so I, I already had one defense, you know, with your university. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so infrastructure. Now we see how important infrastructure is, right? Yeah. And uh, that reminds me uh, one week ago on Friday, I had a lecture with uh, more than 100 students and uh, su suddenly uh, the infrastructure really had problems basically we were under attack so um, there were severe problems basically with the whole university network and uh, it took our technicians more than half an hour uh, to bring back the the normal state uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's always a problem. So when you are uh, mid of a lecture, when you're in an examination, infrastructure stops, then uh, what shall we do? So let's see. Uh, I think in the worst case... Um, this is the solution. <laughs> this is the solution. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> Again. Oh. <laughs> Oh. oh, yes. I think she's yes. Okay, she is back. Sorry, so about Jackard coefficient. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, when we started working on project, we were checking also other metrics, including cost and similarity. However, uh, it uh, doesn't show positive results because we work with a uh, very small uh, with small sentences, especially after cleaning this sentence and removing all the relevant information, it become even smaller. And uh, Jacquard similarity, for example, comparing to cost and similarity shows better results. That's why it uh, made no sense to work with a more complicated method, which shows worse results. That's why we stop on Jacquard cost similarity. Okay, thank you. And uh, another question about um, uh, your manual editing. Could you please explain in more details what uh, do you mean when you told us about your manual editing and after then uh, re-estimate your results? Uh, by manual editing, I mean that automatically when I was extracting pairs of related keywords, I was extracted all pairs from uh, learn, uh, from pairs of learning outcomes. And uh, many of these uh, pairs were not representative for computer science because they were like uh, life is connected with age and something like that. It's not important for our field. When uh, I remove all these irrelevant words, irrelevant terms which are not connected to computer science, uh, this process uh, I was calling manual editing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Maybe uh, our Austrian colleague. Uh. Okay, so thanks. Oh, thanks a lot. Okay. Um, well, it, when, when looking at your master thesis, um, you have a chapter there about Bloom's taxonomy. And yes. uh, now in the presentation, you did not have uh, the time to, for me at least, uh, to sufficiently explain why you didn't use the original Bloom taxonomy. Can you can you can you add something to that? Yes, the main reason for not using original Bloom's taxonomy was that 
uh, it do not contain uh, necessary action verbs which we meet in uh, curriculas and in these learning outcomes. Uh, however, I think that uh, this approach is really good and uh, if we can combine uh, Bloom's taxonomy with this uh, uh, triples of action verbs, we can uh, get these triples into Bloom's levels and uh, then we will be able not only define which, uh, which learning outcome is higher or lower level comparing to the other one, but also define Bloom's level of this learning outcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you suggest then to go back to uh, original Bloom's taxonomy uh, because there is also a reduced form of Bloom's taxonomy. Would you suggest to make use of the reduced form or the traditional one? Uh, I think I would still stay on uh, at least a revised option which contains six levels mm -hmm. because. Uh, on uh, first try and first attempts when we were when we were working with this revised Bloom's taxonomy, we had a problems that very often we got to learning outcomes on the same level. Mm -hmm. That's okay. why I think the number of levels six we should save for sure, or maybe even take a deeper look on two-dimensional Bloom's taxonomy. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, am I allowed to ask a second question, or is there not the time? Okay, perfect. <laughs> Uh, now to something completely different. Uh, so I mentioned that I'm also a software engineer. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about the software development that you did? And uh, so what language did you use? What exper exp uh, experiences um, did you make with your choice of language? Uh, I was using Python programming language. Uh -huh. Why? Oh. Why? Uh... Because I know that this language is good for natural language processing, which was necessary in this case, mm -hmm. and it works with uh, good libraries for natural language processing, such as, for example, Spacey. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was suggested library for me for this project. That's why actually we were using Python from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you would have the chance to start again the same project, but knowing everything that you know now, would you do it the same way or what would you do differently? Uh, I think programming part for me will be for sure faster as I get more experienced. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and, and concerning the rest? Concerning the rest, uh, mm. if I have more time I might take a deeper look on a uh, preprocessing phase and for extraction of uh, keywords and learning phrases because Spacey shows good results. However, it still shows uh, sometimes not satisfiable results with mm -hmm. working with part of speech, for example, defining uh, nouns which ends with ing as verbs and which also can influence. Yes, I was able to solve this problem by identifying these specific forms of uh, specific forms which it thinks as verbs, but uh, which uh, which is recognized as verbs. But uh, for future work, I think it still will be more comfortable to make exact this step working with uh, part of speech taken mm -hmm. more precise. Okay. Okay, uh -huh. I see. Thanks a lot. Um, maybe, maybe one last question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I like the idea very much. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure. I think uh, Alexander suggested that or asked that. But I like the idea of also changing the language. Yeah. So um, here at our uh, department, we have quite some experience, of course, with natural language processing. So uh, a colleague of mine uh, had a PhD thesis in that field, and we really tried out uh, what what's so with with state of the art, state of the practice algorithms, uh, various precision, uh, higher, and so on, either in the English language or with the German language. And it turned out that uh, the results are better for the English language. Yeah? But honestly, I don't know uh, how that would look like for the Ukrainian language or Russian language. 
So, uh, Lisa, when you would have to map now the project to Ukrainian or Russian, what would be your steps? How to do that? I think that the first step will be working on good algorithm which will determine uh, these keywords and key phrases for me, because as uh -huh. far as I know, in Ukrainian language, it can be really problematic as well as in Russian language. So I think that I will put lots of effort already on these first beginning steps. Okay, so that's still the pre-processing step. Okay, and then what next? Uh, then for... Uh, for so can, can, we, can we keep our algorithms, basically, or not? Uh, actually, yes, it can be saved because it will still work with limitized option of verbs and uh, it, mm -hmm. doesn't, uh, it, it uh, doesn't matter whether we compare. In, it's, it will work if we work in the border of same language. Mm -hmm. So if we apply the next steps for Ukrainian language, it still uh, should work out and still should uh, show good results because uh, we will still uh, compare not non-changeable part of words. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think still the hardest point will be this pre-processing step. Mm -hmm. Okay. Determination so. of keywords and uh, determination of parts of which. Okay, thanks a lot. I don't want to consume too much time, so, but thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you for your question. It was interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe uh, you can provide us with a short uh, assessment report mm -hmm. about Lisa's work. Okay. Um, let me let me first give you uh, a short context, and uh, then I can read the most important parts of the assessment reports. Basically, uh, the work of uh, Lisa uh, was about uh, supporting or uh, extending an existing system that we have running at our department. The name is Gecko. And uh, Gecko basically is a system that is able to store competencies from curricula. Uh, but by storing competencies, we not just uh, mean by uh, putting a competency into a database. Basically, it's a graph database. It also stores the relations between these dependencies. And before Lisa came to our department, uh, we had to do everything by hand. So that means that we had hundreds, and it's really hundreds uh, of competencies that we um, had to read and to understand manually, and that we had them to put into a special or specific format to be stored then in the database. And uh, we made quite some mistakes by doing that because uh, people are getting tired. And uh, when Lisa came and we knew about her second background, we were talking about this topic and then finally suggested her to join this development team. And um, basically, uh, in the framework of her thesis, then she was uh, dealing with uh, natural language processing of standardized curricular text. And, uh, carved out competencies and also the dependencies between the competencies. And she really did very well. And uh, if it is okay, then I'm, I'm reading you now section B of the assessment report. It's not too long. And it also describes what she did. So uh, first, let me come to actuality. Um, the thesis uh, of Lisa Deckles definitely a hot topic in the field of applied computer science and also computing education. And it combines techniques from software engineering, from natural language processing, so NLP, and computer science didactics uh, to solve existing and hard problems. And um, she implemented a prototype and her work definitely can be treated as actual and important. Um, she contributed to the field of computing science in several ways. So uh, at first, uh, she provides uh, natural language processing algorithms uh, to the identification of similar competencies in larger collections 
of curricular texts and standards. And uh, she also supports the semi-automatic identification of relations between them. So uh, she implemented a prototype. I already mentioned that. Uh, in my assessment report, there is also a link to the Gecko environment. She was following software engineering standards uh, while she developed everything and uh, tested everything. So the results are now really useful in that project. So um, as such, uh, I can treat her contribution as very important also for the work of our department. Um, the thesis structure itself follows the layout of an evaluation design. That means that she first introduced the problem field, then she looked at state of the art, presented uh, some prototypes and methods, and tests her assumptions. Uh, she did that very well. Um, so the structure of the master thesis definitely is OK. Uh, at some places, however, uh, I would say that it still lacks in uh, precision, uh, especially uh, when describing the validation corpus and the hypothesis. So uh, a bit more detail would have been excellent. But uh, however, uh, it is just a master thesis and not a PhD thesis. Uh, and uh, she also was working in, um, I would say, in a, in a very strange environment, yeah, not being at home. Uh, now also having uh, all these COVID-19 uh, issues. So uh, in the light uh, of all these things, uh, I would say that uh, also this anecdotal evidence that she shows in her master thesis is an important first step uh, for the fundamental research and uh, applicability is definitely given. So to conclude, in general, the work is actual and important. It definitely contributes to the field of computing science. The practical contribution is very good, as it is used now also in a PhD project, and also a scientific contribution is given. So uh, for that reason, I would say that the master thesis of uh, Lisa, uh, entitled Ontolo Ontological Approach to the Classification of Computer Science Learning Outcomes, definitely meets the requirements for a diploma thesis and uh, it's definitely positive. Thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome. I completely agree with your uh, opinion. I think uh, it's really good work and I support Lisa's completely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Александр Олегович, вы подключитесь? Вы без микрофона. Вас не слышно. Подключи его. Я ага. прошу прощения, я только что зашел, так что доклада не слышал, поэтому послушаю. Но вопросов но у меня, естественно, нет. Но мы уже вопросы закончили, и мы а. уже отзыв зачитали, и наши только остались отзывы. Если вы не ну, хотите, прекрасно. Есть положительный отзыв профессора Болина, есть положительный отзыв Чередниченко Ольги Юрьевны, есть рецензия доцента Хнуры Яковлева Елены Владимировны. До недолики в работе с Литвиднести, что доцельно было бы навести конкретные числа виданий для порівняння эффективности выдобывания фактографической информации за допомогою запропонованных в дипломной работе решений с уже існуючими та навести обмеження щодо практичного застосування. Вважає, що робота заслуговує оцінки відмінно, а її автор – присвоєння кваліфікації магістр з інформаційних систем та технологій. Дякую. Ліза, маєш якісь питання? Не слышно. Мікрофон включи. No, for now, no, for me, everything is clear. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you would like to say something for our commission, for your colleagues from Klagenfurt? I just want to thank you for support and uh, thank you for helping me with this project because I really feel it uh, very much and thank you for believing in me. <laughs> so. 
uh, Lisa, thanks for uh, your words. Uh, I also want to say thank you to you, but also to your university and to all of your professors uh, who basically gave you all the necessary knowledge yeah, uh, that you then applied at our department. So thanks uh, to your university. Thank you for the cooperation. We really appreciate it having you here uh, at our team. Unfortunately, uh, there is no free position, but if there would have been a free position, I would really have offered you a position at my department. So, uh, yeah, thanks for your work. And uh, as I see Tillman here also uh, on the video, also thank you to Tillman, uh, because uh, basically he was the person who, uh, yeah, stimulated me in uh, working on the double degree agreement uh, together with him and our international office. And uh, I would say that without him, uh, I would not have been had the chance to meet you all. So thanks a lot. Thank you very me. much. Thank you very much. But there is still some person we, we all remember. It's uh, Henrik Meyer Henry. who was actually. Yes. Not in the round uh, right uh, now, but uh, yes. Definitely, we I also think have to would, I, think, I think he would. I think he would appreciate this if I see that Olga is is uh, making a, a video of this conference, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, let's maybe, say thanks to uh, to him. Thanks a lot. Maybe, and before uh, I do forget, uh, thank you also to Stefan Pasterk because he uh, it is his uh, PhD thesis and. Uh, yeah, so you did a really great job together with Lisa. Thanks a lot. Maybe it would be a good idea to, if uh, uh, Andreas, will you get the video or will it? Will, will I it hope. Remain? I, I hope that I, I later I have access also to the video. Uh, yeah. Then we will send it uh, to him also right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I want to send to I want to say. I I want to say that uh, our cooperation more than 20 years and it is a very uh, important uh, for our department uh, and uh, very uh, very 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 uh, uh, for you it is very good actually, it's, actually it's 25, years, 25 years now yeah 25, 25 years. Okay. Yes, 25 years. It's the cooperation good. agreement, the cooperation agreement between uh, Hager Polytechnics and Klagenfurt is uh, was signed in. It was signed in 1950 in 1995. But uh, well, the, the, actually, actually, the, the, before that, the language courses they started in. Uh, in 92, so it's quite something. This, yeah. this is before I moved to Klagenfurt. Wow. <laughs> yes, but I mean, you see, you see, you see, you see, Andreas, I, th I, I just hope that we can, that we will have, have a chance to go to Kharkov sooner or later. We are yeah. still thinking of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank That's you very it. much. Well, okay, okay. so, Lisa, so, great, thanks. Congratulations to Lisa. Okay. Congratulations, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. So that's the Thank end. Thank you very much. Examination. Okay. Yeah, then thanks a lot. Many greetings from Klagenfurt. And uh, thanks again for the cooperation. You have great students, really, which means that you're great professors. So super. I like it so much. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. У нас 15 минут